Hello everyone, I am Dr. Nikhil Pansare. Today we will see arthroscopic ACL reconstruction surgery, step by step, which I feel are very beneficial for beginners. These are key MRI images showing ACL discontinuity on sagittal cuts and empty lateral wall on orthogonal view. Evaluation under anesthesia reveals grade 3 latchman and a positive pivot shift test. We prefer on-table limb position supported by 90 degree post and a side post, but many surgeons prefer hanging limb position supported by thigh clamp. During initial few cases, it is better if you skin mark all important landmarks such as patella, patella tendon, tibial tuberosity, joint line, pace attachment and standard arthroscopy portals before starting surgery for better orientation during surgery. We prefer to perform diagnostic roundup before harvesting graft even though the diagnosis is confirmed preoperatively. Examination of suprapatellar pouch and patella cartilage. Lateral gutter, the most common site to find loose bodies. Then to medial gutter and then into the notch. Excessive prepatellar fat pad is shaved off to visualize operating field taking care not to damage cartilage and other important structures such as intermeniscus ligament and meniscocapsular junction. Here we can see torn ACL lying into the notch. With lateral empty wall, few fibers are added to PCL fat pad. Medial compartment is visualized with valgus stress in extension to 30 degree knee flexion. Cartilage is healthy and meniscus does not show any tear. Going to lateral compartment with knee in figure of 4 position. Posterior horn of lateral meniscus looks healthy. Shows minimal superficial abrasions, not deep enough to be addressed. The body and anterior horn are intact. Loose ACL fibers are shaved off, keeping tibial stump intact. Now we'll start harvesting hamstring graft. A longitudinal incision about 3 to 4 cm is taken centered on anteromedial surface of tibia starting from the level of inferior margin of tibial tuberosity. Most of the times a small vein is encountered passing across incision which confirms the placement of incision. Cauterize and dissect subcutaneous fat with 15 number knife. Blunt dissection is carried out with fingertip covered with a thin layer of gauge piece. Expose the facial layer overlying pace attachment. Pulpit semitendinosis and gracilis tendons by rolling your fingertips. The thicker tendon is always semitendinosis. Cut open the fascia along superior margin of semitendinosis tendon, taking care not to injure the tendon. Lift the fascia with tooth forceps and extend the opening using dissecting scissor. Take out tendons using mixed forceps. Separate semitendinosis and gracilis tendons. If the patient's height is good, generally semitendinosis tendon is enough. Here in this case, we took out both semitendinosis and gracilis tendons in order to get good graft thickness as the patient is professional athlete. We prefer closed stripper to harvest graft, so the tendon attachments are stripped off the bone with some amount of periosteal sleeve to achieve better length. 
pull the tendon and feel for vinculats and cut it carefully. Once the tendon is mobilized completely, gently pass the stripper with sustained pressure on tendon with knee flexed at 30 degree and little externally rotated. Do not make vigorous push and pull movement of stripper while harvesting the graft in fear of splitting the tendons. If it feels hard to pass stripper, take it out and again check for vincular attachments remaining. Tendons are placed on graft board and debulking is done using blunt scraper to take out all muscle fibers. Here the length of semitendinosis was about 32 cm, so we decided to quadruple the semity. If the length is shorter, you can also make it triple folded. Gracilis is doubled over quadrupled semitendinosis. The final thickness achieved was 9 mm at both ends. Minimum 7 mm of graft thickness is considered acceptable. Anything less than 7 mm should be augmented with number 2 fiber tape as internal bracing. Again internal bracing of graft is the newer technique used widely nowadays for faster rehabilitation during initial days of graft healing. We will discuss about internal bracing, its indications and benefits in another video soon. The graft is put on tension for 20 minutes on graft both. We prefer to cover graft with wet gauge piece and sprinkle some injection gentamicin over gauge piece. Now back to notch preparation. Some fibers of ACL are found to be added to PCL fat pad. These fibers are debrided carefully, taking care not to injure PCL. Always be careful about posterior horn of lateral meniscus while preparing notch with shaver. The posterior margin of lateral femoral condyle is exposed nicely. Superior part of notch is also cleared of excessive tissue carefully to avoid graft impingement on extension. We prefer to take accessory medial portal to prepare femoral tunnel. Entry is marked over ACL footprint. The entry should be as low and as posterior as possible with knee in 90 degree flexion. Always keep in mind the final diameter of femoral tunnel while marking entry. You can also use offset guide to mark entry. Engage the bit pin on marking. Flex the knee completely and advance the bit pin directing it superiorly and anteriorly. Primary drilling completed with 4.5 mm drill bit.
femoral tunnel length is measured here it is 38 millimeters good enough minimum graft length desired within femoral tunnel is 15 to 20 millimeters and minimum lateral cortical thickness remaining after overdrill should be 8 millimeters here the femoral tunnel length is 38 millimeters we took fixed loop button of 20 millimeters so the graft length within femoral tunnel would be 18 millimeters for this 18 millimeters of graft within femoral tunnel we need additional 7 millimeters of length to flip the button so overdrill length would be 25 millimeters calculation for flexible loop is different and easier we'll discuss about it in some other video Overdrilling completed up to 25 millimeters using 9 millimeters drill bit. Loop ethylon is passed over with pin and tied outside. This is how the femoral tunnel looks with intact walls. TBL tunnel is made using zig fixed to 55 degrees angle. The exit of tunnel should be aimed into parent stump in the center along the line with anterior horn of lateral meniscus. Please check beforehand the zig is tip hammer or elbow hammer. Check outside if the drill is hitting desired angle. Hold the tip of bit pin with stout artery forceps so that it should not advance and damage PCL while drilling. You can also use scoop to protect the tip. Loose stump tissue is debrided using shaver. Loop ethylon is pulled outside through TBL tunnel. Outside graft is prepared over a 20 mm fixed loop. Graft is marked using marker pin at 25 mm, which was our femoral overdrill line. Loop button threads are passed through TBL and then femoral tunnel with the help of loop ethylon. Separate threads outside. Hold white tiger threads and pull gradually without touching green non leading threads. Carefully take out the slack in non-leading green threads in between slowly. Pull the leading tiger thread until graft goes into femoral tunnel till marking. Gently try flipping the button. Don't apply too much force while attempting flipping. Forceful attempt may blow out the lateral wall and end up flipping button over IT band. In other way, premature forceful flipping may lock button within femoral tunnel itself. If it is hard to flip, gently try pulling graft further and re-attempt the flipping. After successful flipping, you can have the typical dancing feel of button. Leave all threads and pull graft below through TBL tunnel. Gentle cycling is done and graft is fixed into TBL tunnel using interference screw over guide wire. The knee should be flexed at 30 degree with assistant giving posterior drawer and surgeon pulling graft while passing the screw. This is the final graft placement in anatomical orientation and with proper tension. Graft is nicely coming out of preserved ACL stump. This stump helps in neovascularization of graft and also retains some proprioception properties. Thank you everyone for watching this video till end and I hope it helped you to some extent. Please like, share and subscribe our channel for more such useful orthopedic surgery related videos.